behind me here is the largest megalith in the whole of Britain. This is called the Rudston Monolith and this sits in the East Riding area of Yorkshire in what's called the Gypsy Race. This is a whole area with numerous earthworks, curses, mounds and other sites exist. It's even here, not far from here, in the Folkestone Mound where the great drums were found, the chalk drums that are now on display in the British Museum that show all these beautiful designs uh, of zigzag lines and spirals and also what looks like abstract human faces. Also in this area, Bridlington, one of the Neolithic carved stone spheres was found. This is the most southerly one ever found. Most of them are found in Aberdeenshire. Some are found um, in various other parts of Scotland and Orkney and even in Durham and, and uh, somewhere in the Lake District. But the most southerly one is here in Bridlington, which is just a few miles from the Gypsy Race and Rudston Monolith. Now this is 26 feet tall and apparently when it was excavated about 100 years ago they found that the same length exists underneath. This could be over 50 feet tall in total. That would easily be the largest one in Britain. It's, it's currently the largest one in Britain as it stands. Um, it, was, it came from Caton Beach which is about 10 miles away just on the coast near Scarborough and it was dragged over difficult terrain and then raised here probably around 2000 to 3000 BC although officially it's only 1600 BC. Said to be made of a stone called Moor Grit Conglomerate, which is a kind of sandstone, and this is abundant on the coast not too far from here. But what I find really interesting is the landscape setting. We have like four cursuses, we have two of them going north south, either side of the monolith, we have another one heading southwest from the monolith, and one heading west. And all around this area we have various very large Neolithic mounds. Some of them had burials in. We know that the Folkton Mound, for instance, had a child's burial. And this, it, was, it was with that that the, the so-called Folkton drums were found. But I find this really interesting. So we've got some of the oldest mounds here around this area in Britain. Most of the ones we see around Stonehenge and Avebury, for instance, are all from the Bronze Age, which is a much later date. And so some of them are extremely large, and even Aubrey Burl suggests that it could have even influenced Silbury Hill and other sites in the area. There is a rumour that on one side of the stone here, and this was tested, that there's actually a dinosaur footprint. And this is why perhaps this stone was chosen out of all the others from uh, the area on the coast. We can see what look like cut marks, but these could be the dragging of the stone. It could have been done later by various people who lived here, even the Christians trying to pull it down. And it's very similar to the devil's arrows. You can see the striations that come down because of the water that uh, you know lands on it all through different whole e different epochs of time. You see it with the sun behind it there, and you'll notice that it's got a lead cap on it. This was placed there in the 1800s. It could have been partly to protect it, to stop it getting completely damaged with the rain. You can see the striations up there. You can see the glistening crystalline rock here as well. But it could have also been placed there uh, to actually like cap it and like to stop any pagan energies or earth energies have any power here.